I'm so Huber and in this short video tutorial I want to show you how I deal with high resolution challenges of registration specifically for layer dependent fMRI data and this tutorial is meant as an attachment to the blog post on layerdependentfmri.com high quality registration and the data that I will work on here are um, threefold one data set is a high resolution anatomical scan of 0.5 millimeter resolution an mp2 range like slab image and like in any fmri study we have epi data so here i want to look at these epi data that are acquired at the resolution of about 0.8 millimeter resolution and this is a mean image of an epi time series so it's taken from the entire time series and averaged and the T1 contrast here comes from the additional inversion pulse that is used in specific fMRI contrasts like the VASO. And in the same space as the um, EPI mean, I have the functional activation map also. So here I want to show you how I try to register the high resolution anatomical data to EPI space. And I do this um, with two different programs. One is ITK snap and the other one is ANS. And I will show you why. So let's start by looking at those in the same space. For example, opening um, the API in um, high resolution um, in ITK snap. Sorry. There we go. Image in all three directions, and this is already motion corrected. And then we can add another image onto it. For example, the high resolution um, anatomical MP2 rage scan, which would be the anat.nifty. And I usually try to um, overlay them as semi-transparent. And this means that we have both images available. This, for some reason, has very low um, opacity. You can switch between those uh, views by um, hitting the W button like this. And you can see that those are in a very different space. So we need to uh, register them uh, together. And in ITK Snap, you have this manual and automatic registration tool. So when you go to Tools here and hit Registration, you have an automatic and a manual tab. So for example, if we run the registration like this, you can see that it rarely works, especially not with these very high resolution slab data. So let's reset this to Identity and use the Manual tab here. So here you can select the overlay and manually adjust it while repeatedly pressing the W key to align them on top of each other. So for example, like this, we are getting closer. You can rotate it. You might even have some angle here. So here I'm specifically interested in this uh, middle sulcus here. This would be the central sulcus. And this is an fMRI study um, investigating the motor cortex, which would be right over here. The sensory cortex would be here. And in this area, we now have a rough first initial guess by aligning the anatomical scan to the EPI. And this kind of um, geometric operation that we just did manually can be saved as a matrix. For example, let's call this the initial matrix and save that. Now, as we saw earlier, the automatic um, registration very often does not work. And this partly comes from the fact that it tries to align the entire volume, including the skin and everything. So it helps a lot to on a specific ROI only. So, and we can do that, for example, by uh, opening it again in ANS, uh, draw an ROI that we are interested in. For example, here using a 3D volume ROI and just roughly outlining here the motor cortex or the area that we want to focus our uh, registration on. And this then can be uh, saved as a mask, for example, by a safe segmentation image. just a um, manual transformation that we did and a mask image, which is basically this uh, a binary image telling Arndt Slater which area to focus on. And with that, we can then try to start Arndt with uh, this command. So this command basically um, calls the Arndt registration. It tells um, the 
the algorithm what to do, for example, to register the anatomical image to EPI and not the other way around, and also use this mask file by using a first initial guess of the um, initial matrix. So let's try to run this. And this should take a few seconds or so. This is doing a, a alignment in three steps. The first one is an uh, initial um, rigid transformation, then an affine one, and at the end is very sophisticated uh, nonlinear synth um, registration. And this gives us um, a warped image, uh, which would be this one that should now be aligned to our functional data. For example, we can now uh, look at that with uh, ITK snap again and see if and here flipping back and forth you can see that we have uh, quite large errors outside our region of interest where we uh, did not optimize the registration to however in the central sulcus right here the two uh, different contrasts align pretty well this does not work you can always uh, start playing around with these parameters. Parameters that I found helpful to play around with is, for example, the metric and the cost function of the registration. For example, changing the mutual information here to uh, cross correlation. Or it can also help to um, modify the size of the um, mask that we drew here, make it bigger or smaller, and see if you're becoming more happy with the registration results. At the end, I also want to show you that you can easily use the same transformation that ANTS calculated here and apply to another data set. For example, with um, this commands with ANTS apply transformation, where you give it the same um, matrix and uh, warp field that was calculated earlier up here. Check out the comments below. Thank you.